Do you want to know how to become a millionaire in the real estate business? It may seem like it's too hard of a task, but with the proper discipline and mindset, you definitely can. And I'm going to show you how by utilizing a few tips. Real estate is really a hot market right now, and a lot of aspiring millionaires are jumping on the hype train. But is it really that easy? And if you don't know where to start, don't worry. For someone who became a millionaire in real estate, let me tell you how to become a millionaire in real estate. My name is Munif Ali, and I became a self-made multimillionaire in my early 20s, and I've built multiple brick and mortar businesses with billions of dollars in sales. I started making videos like this to share my life experiences so that I can teach others how to become successful in life and in business. If you like the type of content that I'm giving you, go ahead and smash that subscribe button, like this video, and then share it with people who might find this helpful. Look, the classic way of earning money through real estate is by using your property as a means for rental cash flow. Having that monthly income will significantly help you pay down your mortgage as well as pay for other expenses. For example, not just your mortgage, but your property taxes, your insurance, and your maintenance costs, as well as in certain places, in certain states and cities, you have to pay for utilities, but most places you don't. So you can quickly start to save some of the money, especially if you're living in a multiplex where you're living in one and the others are paying off all of the other bills. You have to also make sure to get that renter in as soon as you close a deal, or preferably if it's already an occupied building. I prefer that you live there when you're first starting out, so maybe a duplex or a triplex, so your cash flow helps offset your own living expenses. That's the simplest form. The other way of looking at it, and it'll really test your patience in real estate, is the rate of appreciation. Appreciation is basically when your property's price climbs over time in value. And it's true that the market has the tendency to always fluctuate. And depending on the market you live in, some more than others. So there's always a danger that prices could mysteriously drop. But remember, they can also rise. And when they do, they traditionally go higher than they were before. It all depends on what's going on with the economy and the demand cycle. But because of the demand cycle, it's almost a guarantee that over time, your property's price will inevitably go up from what you purchased it. It might go down, but inevitably, the cycle will always go up over a long period of time. So you always have to be patient with it. A lot of people lose money because they're in a market and all of a sudden there's a dip and they panic and they sell, just like the stock market. If you're not completely satisfied with the pace of your property's price increase, you can always do what's called a forced appreciation by improving your property's condition, by making improvements on the actual property itself. You can also make it more valuable quickly than before because you're not waiting for markets. You made it look nicer than all the other houses or you kept it up. So you're doing forced appreciation, whether it's a kitchen remodel or bathroom. And yes, you have to shell out more money, but if you believe your property has the potential, then go ahead and add that money in if you think it's going to help your appreciation greatly. You just have to be wise and study that particular market. And if you're so worried about appreciation, then buy in areas that are appreciating faster. You'll pay more, but over time, if it's a desirable area, you end up winning overall. I've bought properties along the beach in beach cities that were dirt cheap before and it just keep rising and rising. And so location is everything. Most people acquire their properties through a loan and that's something you can take advantage of with the help of a tenant, right? The tenant actually is paying down the loan. This is what we call a loan pay down or a debt leverage. It simply means that the balance of your debt will trickle down as your tenants continue to pay your loan down each month. It's going to be more effective if you have tenants that will pay on time every month. So it's crucial you pick the right people to get in business with because it is a business. So after a few years of time, you'll be at zero debt, 15 to 20 to 30 years, depending on what type of loan you have, what the circumstances are. And once you have zero debt and your tenants have paid off all of those loans, guess what? Your entire building now is cash flowing right into your pocket after you take out operating expenses, which is just like any other business. By the way, I have some great news for you. I'm going to be releasing a book on personal finance. It's called The First Steps to Becoming a Millionaire. It's a great book that my team and I have spent countless hours creating. It's going to be one of the best books to help you reach your dreams on becoming a millionaire as fast as possible. Just hit the link down below and sign up so I can give you more valuable content on how to become wealthy. Now, full disclosure, it's a simple book. That means you have to apply a lot of the concepts. It's not gonna make you rich by itself. No book can do that but if you follow the advice, it will make you grow rich over time. Also, if you like this type of content, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button and let me and the algorithm know 
that this content is valuable to you. And I'll continue to bring you more content like this each and every week. And also make sure that you turn on that notification bell so when a new video comes out, you're informed. The US government designed a lot of tax benefits to encourage more purchases and leasing of properties. And I'm sure governments around the world have kind of applied the same thing. And that's why they've given a lot of tax credits to promote ownership in this country. By investing in real estate, you'll take the privilege of tax benefits so it can help you reduce your taxes. For example, your mortgage interest expenses and your capital improvements. Having these deductions in your taxable income can help you save thousands of dollars every year. And the more properties you own, the greater your tax savings will be. And you'll have extra cash so you can get more properties and save even more towards your million dollar savings plan. I literally and legally have written off millions of dollars every year because of my real estate holdings. And it's not like you're, you know, you got some offshore account and doing this and doing that. You can really, really write off a lot of things to benefit. And you can really, really write off a lot of things that are both legal and honest and ethical in your tax planning when you hold real estate. If you combine all the methods that I'm talking about, you'll start to generate wealth. It won't come quick or fast, but it is an easy approach as long as you apply it over time and it's consistently done. Increasing your equity over time, having tenants pay down your mortgage and eventually paying off properties. Once you figure all this out, you can start buying more and more properties or homes or apartment buildings and write off even more taxes. It'll give you the opportunity to really build wealth. You just need to research the area and the property that you're interested in and make sure that the location, the condition and the inventory all match to the price that you're paying and then make sure it's going to cash flow so that you can start to accumulate wealth even faster. So these are my key tips on becoming a millionaire in real estate. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and comment down below if you have anything to share. And if you wanna learn more about real estate, check this video, buy or wait, should I invest in real estate right now?